Welcome to Grown Ass Women, aka hashtag Gaw TV. We are so happy that you're here to join us. We love talking to you guys every single Wednesday. It's my favorite day of the week, and I think my ladies will agree that it's their favorite day as well. First of all, Mickey James, where are you coming from today? Are you Nashville? Are you in Virginia? I am in Nashville this week. Uh, yes, um, Nash, Bell, Nash, Vegas, baby. <laughs> <laughs> New single coming out now. Yep, coming. coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man in San Diego San Diego I'm in San Diego you know that, uh, San, San Diego I can't do it <laughs> there's, one, there's one singer of the group but uh, yeah I'm in sunny California I'm San Diego it's it's super hot it was in the 90s today and um of course um you know a lot of the apartment complexes don't have air conditioning <sighs> that's crazy I know yeah I know yeah. I know. <laughs> Why? I know. <laughs> I'm such a lady. <laughs> what, did, what did Mickey say the other week? Keep it, what was it? Keep it crassy? Crassy. Keep it crassy. Keep it crassy. <laughs> Another Keep hashtag. Crassy, full of the hashtags. Well, speaking of being full of it, we are full of love for all of you guys and gals for joining our Patreon. Now, we have told you sort of in the beginning stages, we were like, okay, we're going to make a Patreon, and now we're sort of into it. By now, we're fully fledged patrons. Uh, patron creators and we've had so much fun with all of you we've sent out our video shout outs to our gorgeous members and we keep sort of tweaking and adding the tiers which is a lot of fun so you guys first of all how have you been enjoying patreon is it something that you're getting into you liking it i'm having fun i'm having this yeah really fascinating right because i wasn't really aware apparently like we were talking about it when you because i know that you've done patreon and you're so good at it but i remember hearing about patreon so long ago and apparently i had created an account like three years ago or whenever it first came out and I had never used it. So now I'm actually like, I'm not, you know, using it, but it's like funny because now through this God TV Patreon, I'm learning all these like little things that yeah. I had to download Flickr for you. Flickr. Yes. Flickr. We hardly even know her. I barely know her. <laughs> of course. Um, we, it's, you know what? We're so lucky Mickey that we have such a great teacher like Val teaching uh, us how to do Patreon. <laughs> Because the, the social media platforms, there's so many platforms, it's very overwhelming. And when you were telling me about Patreon, I'm like, oh my God, I just started a TikTok. And I have a Snapchat, I have a Facebook, I have a Twitter, I have, you know, uh, Instagram. It's just a lot to do. But then once you taught us how easy it was to do Patreon and how yeah. interactive it's going to be for the people that are going to be members, and especially the top tier ones, it's exciting. They're getting a lot for their buck. You for know? sure. So they we're are. excited. And as, as you put it, Lisa, so eloquently, um, I've had some wine. I can't believe I just said the word eloquently so eloquently, but I just said eloquently. <laughs> Hashtag eloquently. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the, the, you put it so well to say that, yeah, it is very fan interactive. And that's the whole point of this show. That's the whole point of our Patreon is to make sure that we're kind of like getting to know all of you. Like when we see you guys in the chat, it's like, oh my God, it's Frank. It's Anthony from France. It's, it's Remy. It's, it's Sadie. It's, all of our friends are in there. Uh, Arno, Kev, there's so many of you. Hopefully you're in the chat right now. To my, what did it be to my right? Here? Am I pointing? <laughs> Everyone look over here. Out. This way, that way. <laughs> that way. That would go but this we, way. Yeah. But we love you guys, and it, it's cool with Patreon. We can literally get to know all of you one-on-one, -on -one and it's really, really neat. So if you haven't already joined patreon.com slash gawtv, please go there. Uh, and that brings me to our social peak. We're very social butterflies. We love our so social media. But our social peak this week, I thought we would show you guys uh, something that we all came up with to do as a weekly little treat for you guys. So we've all come up with our own little segment. We've all designated a day to have a weekly video update. And that means, scarily enough, that gives us free reign to talk about whatever we want to talk about. Uh, I chose SoCal Sunday, and it's just my way to kind of say, hey, to everybody, have a good little day. Uh, Lisa, you have Friday. That's, is that right? I have Friday, and we um, group. Uh, we we decided to call it Widow's Peak Freaky Friday. Try saying that really fast. Widow's really Peak difficult. Right. Widow's Peak Freaky Friday. Friday. Right. Yes, yes, and um, um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. To, um, I actually did a poll on Patreon to ask them, but then all of a sudden, when we were talking about it, the Widow's Peak. I think Mickey, you were mentioning something about the Widow Widow's Peak. When I was like, oh, I got you know, Mick, you know, your Patreon, yours. I don't want to even say because I want you to announce what yours is. Yeah, what's yours, um, Mickey? But, yeah, Mickey, you tell me yours. Mickey, baby, that's why. 
<laughs> what is it? Rolls off the tongue. Monday night Mickey. Yeah, so every I Monday, know. because you know, I mean, let's face it, Monday nights are all about the Mickey and slipping it all is. the Mickeys. I don't know what that even means. I don't. You know. <laughs> that's a totally different. That's show. Saturday. That's, <laughs> that's Saturday. That's every Saturday. Slipping the Mickey Saturday. <laughs> yeah, slipping Mickey Saturday. Well, we could tell you all we want about what it means to see a weekly video update. And again, it's an exclusive to all of our patrons. It's just something from all of us because we want to do it separately and just sort of share a little bit more about ourselves rather than do, do the group thing. So we have got a little uh, video for our social peak. It's actually a collective social peak. Here we go, the social peak, everybody. Ready? I can't do that one. How do you do the upside? I'm struggling. <laughs> How long? That'll work. That'll work. She's doing a little. Ooh. Hers is more like a monocle, like Downton Abbey style, like a. Yes, yes. Yeah. So let's take a look now at our social peak, which is our a little montage of our weekly video exclusives. You can see on Patreon.com/slash TV. Check this out. Ow! Hey, you guys. Thank you so much again for being our Patreon subscribers. As you will see, I'm wearing sunglasses. Um, I'm in my truck right now, just made a little pit stop because Donovan and I and Pixie D. <laughs> He's feasting on Kit Kats right now. Hey guys, so Cal Val here. Welcome to our photo shoot. Wanted to give you guys a little preview because this won't be out for a while. A few bloggers and fashionistas, stylists and myself and Milton Keynes. I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hay fever. It's it's a real thing. Yes. Guess what today is? Widow's Peak Freaky Friday. Not just Filter Friday, but Widow's Peak Freaky Friday, which is special for all you Patreon members. Um, yeah, super exciting. So this is my first um, post. How exciting. Yes, so that's what you can expect from us on Patreon. We love doing our weekly video updates in our own personal way. You guys love doing those. Monday Night Mickey, I think, is going to be a big hit, as well as Widow Peak Freak Friday. Yes. Oh. Widow's Peak Freaky Friday. Freaky, freaky. Friday. Oh, yeah. Got to put the freaky <laughs> in it. <laughs> yeah. Something yes. tells me that Lisa always puts the freaky in it. I'm just saying. You know. You know. Guilty. Oh, guilty. <laughs> guilty. Guilty. <laughs> Well, speaking of fan interaction, and we, we love talking about Patreon and all of our uh, guys and gals that are so loyal to us in the chat, um, we have a really great segment that we're going to start doing, which is sharing our fan art that all of our amazing hashtag Team Gaw has been sending us. And our wonderful friend, Frank, who is so lovely, oh, at Frankster Rules. Can we Frank, do those angels tank. pose for him? Frank, I think we should. Tank. Frank the Tank. Oh, Frank the Tank. I'm you guys will not believe what he's done. He, so, so we were in the chat. Do you remember this? We were talking in the chat at, at a previous episode, and we said, we love Charlie's Angels. He's like, I don't know what to do about a sketch. Should I do, you know, a theme? And we said, Charlie's Angels, we love it. So we have a quick video from Frank. He's so sweet to not only make us artwork, but to send in a video as well. So take a look at this. Hey, Go TV gals. This is your friendly neighborhood illustrator, Frank. I just want to say I really enjoyed working on this piece for you gals. Thank you, SoCal Val, for the great request. And uh, a great he a hello to my longtime friend, Lisa Marie, who I cannot thank enough for all the support she's lent to me over the years. Love you, gal. Mickey, Val, you are absolute sweethearts. I cannot wait to meet you both once we are let back in this world. I'm looking forward to the show and consider the f this piece of art my gift to you gals. Go TV. Frank, you are so talented. I've told you for many years. Thank you so much. We love the Charlie's Angels. And your dog, Penny, is freaking oh adorable. <laughs> so, he, he, uh, Penny could be our Bosley. Yeah. Yes. Well, Nick we, is going to be very upset people. about that. He just lost his 0. .0001% <laughs> to a dog named Penny. Yeah. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> Amazing. Oh my God. I love that. No, but, but we, we just we're want so to say thank you. So much. Is cut. <laughs> what? What, Nikki? What? I said her name is bigger than his cut. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to kill me. <laughs> I love it. No, the artwork is amazing. As you can see, we're putting it up on the screen for you now. It is so beautiful, especially because we love Charlie's Angels. Frank, you are a superstar. Thank you for being a hashtag gorgeous on our Patreon as well. 
Well, we do make it a point every single week to ask the questions, who are you wearing and what are you drinking? Lisa? Moi, me first. Well, I'm gonna first start off with my outfit. Oh, right here, it's camouflage. Oh, it's a dress. Oh, it's I a I think it's a problem. pajama. Oh, oh so pretty. Isn't it yeah. cute? I got it um, $3 at Ross. No. The streets. <laughs> yes, it's yes. They're, they're, the Ross is clearing out all their shelves because they're expecting new shipments. So they're, they're getting ah. rid of everything. So it, it's yes. a good time to come and then to go shopping. <laughs> and what am I drinking? I'm just <laughs> drinking like... my favorite red wine. I just, you know, um, I wish I had fresh, fine wine. I ran out because it's so yummy. Mm -hmm. So I had to go across the street to buy something not so good. But um, yeah. Your coffee <laughs> cup. In the coffee cup. So <laughs> That's the size of Texas. What the hell? Where did you get that? <laughs> my brother. I stole it from my brother's house. Another gift wow. from my brother. I said, oh my gosh, I have to keep up the, all the uh, funky cups I'm getting. Can I take this and hilarious. use it for a show? <laughs> I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> Just kind well, of. head fits inside of it. <laughs> I know. Wow, I need to up my stemware game. I'm just, I'm wearing a little bit of polka dots. I thought I'd be fun and have an updo. I never have an updo. I thought that'd be fun and cash. And I've got a little, you know, I, I, my favorite is Sauvignon Blanc. A crisp, grassy New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. My favorite is Oyster Bay. And a uh, little bit of polka dots, a little bit of retro Primark pajamas. I love these. Um, I, I posted a photo on Instagram and a video so you can see the whole little ensemble. Ensemble. Uh -huh. And yeah, very, yeah, yes, you're so fancy. Mickey, what are you wearing mm -hmm. and drinking? Um, I am drinking, you know, some Tito's and Fresca. Fresca. Mm -hmm. You know, Fresca's hard to find these days. I only ever see, see it on like Delta flights. I always think that like when I always say like, oh, I want to really? go look for Frescas. But people when they're like, oh, you have, when people come over the house, they're like, oh, what do you got to drink? And I'm like, oh. There's some diet sodas over there, and then of course I have to keep the orange sodas for the kids or whatever. And I'm like, but and I got some frescas, and they're like frescas. Who's yeah. Drink some? Clearly, I do. <laughs> Me, I love fresca. <laughs> but what I, I'm wearing this, it says inhale, exhale, because that's how I'm trying to live my life right now to like just maintain my sanity. It's actually a whole little. I'm a, kind of afraid to get up here. To... Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, I can't go to work. Ah! I broke my butt bump. Now it's a party. Mickey, I have to ask you, if you're talking about inhaling and exhaling, this might be something for a future episode, but I do have to ask. We've talked, all of us have talked about like yoga and meditation and stuff like that. You're very well versed in like yoga and, and, and sort of that inner peace and, and mental tranquility, if you will, especially yoga. You practice it quite a bit, don't you? I do. I do yoga almost every single day. I, I have, especially, I feel like it's become a staple in my rehab. I, I found that, especially in these last, cause I'm like, oh, how can I, cause I still feel like this tightness and the strength differences and my balance is off and just, um, I love it. I love it. And I feel like there's a certain peace of mind that happens with it because I can go in the gym and train for two hours or whatever. And I can do a 40 minute yoga class and be just as exhausted more from it because you have to use your muscles in such a different way and the focus and the breathing and the um yeah i love it it's really good for my soul so i appreciate that but I, it's something that we all it's like a work on right like it's just more of my spirituality or like poor, more of like just trying to be you know okay in your own skin all the time you know what i mean and feel good in your own skin all the time and positive and have like try to find that synergy. And I don't know, because it wasn't something that I was like really driven to, like I was really driven by a while back ago. It's just something that I've always been a very spiritual person and been very open as far as all that goes and like my crystals and all that. But yoga, it's always been one of those things. I'm like, Oh, I do it like once a week or I'll do it here and there, but I've really started to implement it a lot more in my yeah. workouts and my practice. I love it. I love it. You know, yeah. I, I tried, I tried Bikram yoga and um, this was back in, I don't was it Louisville or... I think it was Louisville, um, Kentucky, I think. Louisville. And it was Bikram. It was like the hot Louisville. You have, to, you have to pronounce it right, or else you're in trouble if you don't pronounce it right. 
Um, right. So I took, I took a, it was, it was a 90 minute class though, yoga, um, Bikram in hot. And it was, I could, I, it was just too much for me. I was like, and I think for me, I need to get something really quick. And then I was, I was using muscles, which I should have strengthened, like around my ankles and your core and like for the balance and everything. And I was realizing, oh my gosh, this is very difficult and I'm not grasping it like that. And that was, right. I know you have to overcome that boundary, but at the beginning, you know, as an athlete, I think when you're not used to getting something just like that, you're like, I don't like it. I think I need to give it a shot again. Or maybe 90 minute class might've been too much for me. Maybe I should have just baby stepped yeah. it. Well, to get even used to it. Bikram is a big jump for your first yoga. Like, I feel yeah, like when I first started, I went more for like a yoga flow class, like more like, and, I, and every, my favorite person, I have two, like one that I do on the road, but when I'm back home in Virginia, I have Soko Yo, which is very like a relaxed, laid back, go at your own pace. We, we do our hot yoga class, which I always try to make his hot yoga class, but the Boho Beautiful is who I follow on, mm. you know, YouTube. And I think she's fantastic. And I implement those in my workouts, you know, on the daily, like, and if I feel like I need a 15 minute workout, she's got some really incredible, like short workouts, long workouts. And like, I love her stuff. I love her platform. Yeah. Um, I've talked about that with you guys before, but it's just, it's really something that we, we, I think, because we are so we've had to like learn how to lift and be strong and do all these things that we've never challenged our muscles and our bodies more on a focused in alignment and um, our balances and all those things. Like we, that's where yoga challenges you that we don't get really challenged in a certain way. But I found that it's really helped me a lot in my flexibility and my, you know, my body, you know how we, we get beat up a lot. It's like being in a minor car accident every time we go out there. Yeah. And so it just helps me keep my whole balance, my spine lengthened. So I don't feel like my hips are tight or rotating and all these like little aches and pains that come with the game that you already know that you deal with. It just kind of helps me keep, you know? Yeah. So I don't walk around like a grizzled old lady with my kite. <laughs> well, granny, no, you turned us on to, to Boho Beautiful. And I love uh, when we can share, you know, someone that we love following on Instagram or someone that's impacted our lives in terms of health and fitness and, and being mindful and yoga for me, like, I, I, I prefer the flow stuff, but Lisa touched on something that I think is interesting that I need to be challenged with yoga. I don't really like when it's like, I went to a class that was sort of like reconstructive yoga. So I didn't realize it was, I thought it was just a flow class. And we just like laid around in different positions. And I was like looking at my friend, like, what the F are we doing? I was so pissed off. Bored? I want to feel like I'm working something. Yeah. And like, I, I don't take baths. Like, I don't like to just relax. I'm not good at switching off. So the breathing was like, okay, I could have just done this at home. It was really, really boring for me, but I like to sort of like, do, do the middle. I don't want to do something super, super, uh, you know, uh, stressful, but I want it to be a flow where it feels like right. I'm actually working some muscles and things. So everyone has their different flow of yoga and it's very interesting. There's different types for everybody. So for, for sure. sure, for sure. Um, so as you guys know, we have so many wonderful fans that send things in, in terms of questions for us via video submission, via Twitter submission. And right now we're going to go to a very special fan question of the week. So this question is from Dan Hawkins, AKA rock DH one six underscore Dan. Here's the video of him asking a question to all of the ladies of God TV. Good morning. Hello, Mickey James. So cow Bal and Lisa Marie. It has often been said that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. So my question to you ladies is, what is your favorite thing to have for breakfast? Not when you're in a rush, just what is your favorite food to have for breakfast? I would say a nice, like delicious omelet and some biscuits and gravy. Ooh, with a side of biscuits and gravy. Like I really don't because in my omelet, I feel like I can, I can dice up some ham. <laughs> I'm sorry, I Mickey. I don't mind. We said it in the chat a few weeks ago. Like, I think ham, ham is mentioned at ham. least every other episode, and it's hysterical. Yeah. Ham, ham, ham. ham. Um, but I can put whatever I want in my omelet, if you will, to get all my veggies and my meats and my eggs and all my goodness. But there, are, like, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm a sweet. Like, I love waffles. I had to really think because I'm like, oh god, I really love waffles too, and I love pancakes, but. There is something to the right, like biscuits and gravy, like that sawmill gravy with the sausage, not just the pepper gravy. It's got to have the sausage in it too. So that's me. 
That's me done. <laughs> Lisa, what about you? Um, there is a dish my mom used to make. It's called um, Belen. Um, it's a Turkish or Tatar, her background. Um, it's like a crepe. And I remember just recently I te texted my family, hey, what's mom's recipe for Belen? And they, gave, they said, pick to pick your recipe, milk, sugar, flour, eggs. And I go, it didn't say one cup, one egg, nothing like that. So you just have to eyeball it. And I go, I don't know how to do that. So my dad had to step-by-step step teach me how to do it. And um, it's, it's just basically like, just like a, it's, I'm not into sweets. I'm not a sugary kind of person. So it's, um, I either put, you know, just butter on there or just um, Philly cream cheese on there, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I will cook it on one of the sneak peek skis. How about that? Ooh. Ooh, okay. Okay. Because it's super okay. easy. It's really super. I, I was embarrassed that I asked for this recipe for how simple it was, but it's very plain, but so delicious. It's just, um, I can eat a ton of it. And it just, I think it's also comfort it's food like for me. Crepe, like yeah, yeah. Crepe, there's like the, it's like rolled and different things. Yeah, and so you like, make it like when you, when you pour it in the pan, you make it really thin, really uh, thin, and it, it starts it bubbling. Like a tortilla, yeah. but like a sweet tortilla. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. It's something that I've little... turned on to recently. I'm not, I was never a creper, but I will I wasn't either. I wasn't either. And, yeah. and I had, the, there's a crepe place down the street from me and it, that's too sweet for me. Mm. I mean, it's too like sugary. I don't need the fruit and everything on that kind of stuff. Right. I like it very plain and buttery, you know, more, right. more of the, the fat. Buttery. And also, you know, I always, yeah, <laughs> I like, I like my bacon. You of like your ham? I like my bacon. bacon. Well, don't get me started about the about the bacon in the UK. It's not our kind of bacon. It's very oh, I know. Healthy. Yeah, it's like yeah. ham. It's ham. <laughs> it always comes back to ham. You're such a ham. No, it does. What's though. yours? Their, their What's bacon yours is like ham here. My, mine What's is. I, mean, I don't know. You know, I, I I have to say I'm not a breakfast person. We had this conversation on a either. different episode of Gaul where it was like we we're talking about the guys that the wrestlers always want to like just gorge on breakfast food and Waffle House and IHOP. I never even liked eggs. It took me years to really like the even the taste of eggs. I'm not like into it. But if eggs have like, there, there's a few places here that make sort of like an avocado feta chorizo, very brown chorizo, like very crispy chorizo, um, sriracha egg. Th that kind of stuff all together is nice. I, I a lot of times make something very, very Tex-Mex. And over here in England, like people can't believe that I'm having like smashed avocado with like tons of cilantro and lime, or they'd call it coriander. Um, and like salsa on a tortilla, for example, with some egg. Like I love anything Tex-Mex, and over here it's very too. yeah, like avocado yeah, toast. Right. southwestern oh, mm -hmm. avocado mm -hmm. toast. Me too. What do they call those skillets? Like a like a hash almost. Yeah. So if you you know what I'm talking about? Yep. The hat has like a little bit of potato, a little bit of meat, a little bit of egg. It's all like mixed up in one big iron skillet. Ooh, it's yeah. really yeah. like. That's delicious. Yeah. I love it. It's so I, like good. That. I mean, if we're talking cheat meals, like I could just kill someone for freaking hash browns and ketchup and that kind of stuff, but I don't allow myself that. I wish I could. Brothered, covered, and smothered. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, that, is that our name collectively? Who be brothered, covered, and smothered? <laughs> is that brother. Waffle House? Is that Waffle yeah. House? <laughs> I want to be smothered. You want but your so hash you said, like, you're, you're really not a covered. breakfast person, but the, the question was about like, if we had time to have a good breakfast, what it would yeah. be, right? I don't I'm ever breakfast. Have breakfast. I've cut breakfast out. I've been fasting until like one o'clock. So breakfast is, I get my coffee in the morning, but I probably don't eat until about one o'clock. I've, I've quit doing breakfast to try to kickstart whatever on the back. I don't know. So, yeah. but I love breakfast. I do love breakfast. I don't. I don't. It's one of my favorite meals. I could have breakfast for dinner any day of the week and I'm completely content. Pancakes and bacon and eggs. And I'm, I'm that good. is controversial breakfast for dinner yeah i felt like it was a staple that i grew up in with my house like at my mom we always had at least maybe at least once a month we had breakfast for dinner really where we had that would the make full me feel dinner. so thrown off and i don't know why i know i know I, but I we occasionally have bacon yeah i think bacon eggs and toast at nighttime is is good too we have it occasionally too yeah but <laughs> i'm like oh you know this is so against my rules no I'm shocked. Yeah, and you know what's weird too? It's like um, you said you're fasting so you don't eat until one. I'm just not in, ready to eat in the morning. I'm not starving yet. You know what I mean? So I always feel like since you're fasting, this is a good, also another conversation we should have. 
I thought, I thought it would slow my metabolism down that I'm not eating breakfast. You know what right. I mean? So I almost try to force myself to eat just something, but I'm just not ready. I have my coffee and, you know, uh, with it's my so whipped cream on there. When you're hardcore dieting, breakfast is like, that's where most people fail is that breakfast is the most yeah. important meal of the day. And because, you know, the way I try to get my calories in on the back end or whatever, or however, and I try to, I don't know. You know, we try these different things and we'll see what works, right? But this one's been working so far, you know, for me. Um, but I, you know, it's like, because breakfast is one of those big commitments and a lot of people are like that. They're not hungry when they first wake up in the morning, mostly because they haven't drank enough water. That's really the real of it. Like they haven't drank enough water. So they're like still like dehydrated from sleeping all night and like burning all this stuff up overnight when you should be really hungry. But I struggle to eat breakfast sometimes. Like it, it, I have to be up yeah. and I think up for at least an hour or two before I'm hungry to eat like a full breakfast breakfast, you know? Isn't that funny? But it is, Val, that's Val, where do you your eat diet breakfast? goes. Is because yeah, you're, that's you're, why I'm so shocked because that's what's so interesting to me is like, since I was a little girl, it's like something I've like developed over the years. Since I was a little girl, I've always just been a grazer. Like my mom would joke and say like, we'd have take, you know, I almost said takeaway. That's such a British thing to say, takeout. And it was like, I'd eat a little bit of the meal. And my mom would say in about like an hour, she'll come back to it. My mom, my grandmother would try to take my plate away. So no, no, she'll come back to it. And I always just, I'm kind of like always eating little bits. And even in the morning, like if I don't eat within about 30 minutes, I, I, ha I have to, a weird thing. I'm not super routine based, but I have to have a bunch of chilled lemon water. And if I don't eat anything within about 30 minutes, I get really, really super nauseous, always have. So I have to wow. eat. Isn't that weird? Everyone's body's no. different. But yeah. what do you eat in the well, morning? That's a good thing, though. Uh, honestly, a, a normal breakfast for me would be like um, a low carb tortilla with peanut butter and honey, a little tiny little drizzle of honey. Um, I have a low carb, uh, I do low carbs, low carb uh, granola with a little bit of milk, um, uh, you know, egg with avocado. Uh, uh, again, low carb, like a little slice of low carb cracker or tortilla or uh, bread with smashed avocado, maybe a boiled egg, maybe. Um, uh, a lot of sriracha, a lot of hot sauces in the morning. Yeah, I, I eat a lot of different little breakfasts and stuff. And it, it's amazing because a lot of people say that they're like, I cannot eat that early in the morning. And I'm like, I got to get that in there. Yeah. Um, weird, right? I'm a little like you yeah. as far as a grazer, though. I do. It's really hard for me to sit down and eat breakfast, lunch, or, or dinner to like really sit and commit to eat a full meal. Yeah. I pick, I'm a picker. Me like, too. I graze. And then I'll like, fill up just enough to like whatever. And then I end up keeping like, even when I go to work and we have a like catering, I always get my little to-go box. Cause I realize that I peruse through catering and Byron has a good impression of me. And I think I should, I'll send it in. I'll send it to you. of like what I'm like through catering. Cause I'm like laughing and talking with everybody, but I'm really like scoping. Okay. What's on the catering menu and what do I really want to try? And more likely it's more than one thing. So I like make my little thing of like little stuff I'm going to pick on. Yeah. Out. yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt your story, but let me tell you, I love Byron. We have to get him on Gaw TV. I have known that, that boy, I say boy, he's a man, but I have known him boy. since he was about, I don't know how old, when I did like my, my first or second show in Florida ever, when I was about 17, we were on the same shows and he is a damn national treasure. We got to get him I on Gaw TV. I adore Byron so he much. He is such a, such a sweet, sweetheart. I, I had so much fun with him on main event and he, I, I, I really attribute a lot of stuff to him because he helped me so much. I had nothing, I had no idea what I was getting my work, my world into in the whole commentating gig. And he really held my hand through oh, a lot of it. Nice. So he's so talented, isn't he? He's very underrated. He's, he's so talented. So he's very smart. So smart. Really talented and charismatic and funny. Like he's wicked funny, and he, but he's very like clean, very proper funny where, totally. you know. We totally. keep it crassy all the time. So our <laughs> was, I mean, I felt like I probably offended him at least once every Monday. He's so classy. I feel like if he came on the show, <laughs> like when he comes on the show, we'd have to like watch our language because he's so low, oh, really? classy. He's a, he's a gent. He's okay. very much a gentleman. He is. And chivalry, it's not completely dead. It's just in a coma, you know? It's on life support. <laughs> is that what he says? <laughs> he should. Yeah. <laughs> or is that what you say? That's a Mickeyism right there. Oh, well, that's chivalry. <laughs> well, ladies, if you don't mind, we're going to take another fan question. This one is via Twitter. We have a screenshot for you. This is from our friend Anthony, who's all the way in France. 
Uh, bonsoir, Anthony, mon ami. He asks, um, when you were younger, what job did you want to do and why? Anthony is in the chat with us all the time. Merci beaucoup to Anthony for the question. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Ooh, very, very sexy French from Mickey James. <laughs> I'll go first because I have a really weird one. I don't think you guys will be uh, privy to what I'm about to say. So when I was little, I had different ideas of what I wanted to do. Obviously, acting was like, just made sense for me. But, you know, we're kind of in the acting business in a weird way now. But for a while, I wanted to be an ice dancer, like an ice skater, like a professional ice skater for a long time. I can time. see that. Yeah, I had all these. Uh -huh. I, I think it was the sequin outfits. I really do. Uh, I did too. They were such big stars at the Winter Games, you know? Yeah. Like, I didn't watch the skiing. I only watched for the ice skaters. Like, that's yeah. where the people would watch for the luge or they would watch for all these other things. And I'm like, I just want to see the ice skaters. I didn't think about that. Was the, they would yeah. the pairs, the tandem. Oh, where yeah. It was the, the guy pairs, yeah. together and then he would flip her and she would go flip, oh, flip, flip, twirl, 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 ski and he would catch her and then release and like this beautiful. Very elegant, yeah. yeah you can it, see why, no. I mean, if, if you know me, you can see why I'd, I'd be drawn to something like that. It was like sequins and pop and circumstance and a bit of like romance and whatever. That's what for I sure. kind of, for a, a short while when I was younger, what I wanted to do. Lisa, can you think of something that you wanted to be when you were younger that you thought would be your career path? Is it shocker that I wanted to be a lot of things? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was, of course, into gymnastics, so I thought I'd be an Olympic gym gymnast when I grew up. Um, and then I wanted to be a dancer. Um, uh, I wanted to be so many things. I wanted to be a doctor. If I had a cool doctor, I was like, I want to be a doctor. And then if I had a cool dentist, I want to be a dentist. I want to be just like, just whoever was my role model at the time. I want to be I would everything. Be a, yes. Well, you, but what, I remember, you, okay, you, a funny, the funny story you, though. Anything like, your heart little wants to be. Exactly. That's yeah. it. exactly. So kind of like in wrestling, we did it all. Gymnastics, yeah. uh, you know, we, you know. Yeah, we did it all, you know what I mean? So it's like, but like a memory that you guys would appreciate is when, um, what, what's the show, um, The Fly Girls? Um, oh my God. Um, in Living Color. Living, Living Color. Color. I was obsessed. Do I was what you wanna do in Living Color. In Living Color. I wanted to be a fly girl. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I, I wanted to be a fly girl so badly because I did hip hop in, in school, you know, and, um, I was like, I used to watch it, and Jazz, in back in wrestling, um, used to, she goes, what do you do, memorize BET um, videos? And I go, I do. I actually do. I <laughs> Look, I, do. The, the I love Jazz so much. I do, too. I do, too. I love but her. I, I thought I was going to be in, in, in living color. <laughs> a fly That's girl. So funny. That's not I don't a bad thing to have. I want to be so many things. So You're many our things. fly girl. You are. Hey, I've yeah. actually watched, I will say this right now, because I've actually watched Lisa Marie clear an entire dance floor in Portugal, in Lisbon, if you will. And I remember this because I went out and I bought, and what the weird thing in, in Portugal, I don't know if it's Portuguese or Lisbon, but they love to have a little glass and you look down in the center of a glass and there's a penis in it for the fertility like God or some weird stuff. And I bought a shot glass that had a little penis inside of, I'm like, what is this? They explained, I also bought other art from Lisbon. Please don't be, you know, I didn't only buy the penis shot glass, but you know. <laughs> Mickey, that's what I was never, remember from this conversation, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. Okay. But I, I, I'm gonna go to your house and see just a wall of just pee pee. <laughs> shot and just, one of those little tribal like wood carvings and he's got like a barrel on and you slide it yeah, down. Yeah, goes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just, just staring at you. I may or may not have that. I don't know. Um, don't know. <laughs> my point is, is I legit watch Lisa. I'm freaking dying laughing thinking about it. I forget who was there. It was everybody. We were all, this is when we would go on tours and we would actually go out and have fun as a group and not be a bunch of nerds. So we went to a club and we had like VIP. And I want to say Kiki was there. You were there. I was there. Oots was there. Eki was there. Kyoto, God, it was, God, yeah. I'm going to stop naming people because I don't want to incriminate anyone. However, yeah. <clears throat> there was a dance off between one Portugal man, one Portuguese man, and one Lisa Marie that was literally back and forth for 15 minutes to where Lisa ended it freaking 
wormed no. it across the floor, popped it up, shoulder shimmy, and fucking moonwalked all the way back to <laughs> our side, turned around and like high-fived Eki and like space walked out of that shit. Like with <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It was God, the greatest. I wish I wish footage of this. This was pre like everybody got everything on their phone and social yeah. media and you know, yeah. we stereotyped carried our cameras around, which we weren't allowed to bring into the nightclub, clearly. So, but that was oh honestly one of the funniest moments. I will never forget it. And I just remember all of us, all the boys and all the gals on this, you know, tour or whatever, because just being all like, Lisa, oh, 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 oh. And she's like, mm, mm, I believe mm. it. I, I, I can see it. I wasn't even there, but I can see it. I can envision it. And oh yeah, my God, yeah, it was the funniest and, thing ever. And the way you, you remember it, it alcohol has, has, you know, I don't know how to moonwalk, but the way if, if you said I moonwalked, it was fantastic. It was one of the fine. greatest things yeah. I ever witnessed in the history of the world. It was so funny. Oh my God. I had so much fun. Those I wish fun. we had footage yeah. of that, but to be honest, sometimes stories like that are funnier in your head. So I, I just want yes. everyone to like close their eyes and just imagine Lisa in a dance off and moonwalking right. at a situation. That's it, Val. She, it. she okay. right. destroyed him. And it went back and forth. Like they had a couple battles. Like it started with her doing her like little thing. Maybe she hit an L kick. I think that's where it started is she hit an L kick and then like top back up and then she like shoulder shimmied out of the back stop. And yeah. then he like Roger rabbited in there and was like, <laughs> <laughs> What? What year was this? He like called her out. He called her out and they went back and forth. Like I want to say they went back and forth like four or five times before she finally hit the freaking. He, he kind of like got a, a little, I remember like he kind of got a little. He got very aggressive. A little sassy. I was like going, uh -uh. I was it's like. a dance off. It's a dance. Yeah, and, it, and it's a guy doing this. I'm like, going, what the heck is yeah, he doing? He was you very wonder if, don't you wonder if, if your dance-off opponent is now telling the story to all of his friends, the opposite of what you're saying? <laughs> like, he <laughs> he just, went, like, oh, I, I totally did. smoked this girl, and I totally had it. When <laughs> we all no idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she told this girl, this girl danced like uh, on um, uh, Jerry Seinfeld, you know, when Elaine could Delay. dance. <laughs> Remember? Oh, yeah. How she was dancing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, Mickey, just to go back to the question, when you were younger, what job did you want to do and why? Well, obviously, I wanted to be a wrestler. I think that, you know, you Lisa touched on that. Like, at a young age, you want to be everything. Yeah. Like, I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be a model. I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be a wrestler because um, my now dad was a wrestler. all those things. Look now, I'm all yeah. those things. I mean, you know, the vertical cha vertically challenged thing didn't really work in my favor for the whole modeling thing, but you know, to each his own. Some people like You shorts. still model, you still do photo shoots, that's Fine. modeling. We do, we do. Um, yeah. But I will say the one thing I thought I was gonna do with my life, the one thing that I honestly wanted to do, and like really thought about a lot of time and really dedicated a lot of time to in my younger years was horses. I thought I was gonna be a horse trainer. That's I what I was gonna train horses change a, a horse like we were gonna we had a morgan horse farm so we bred and we showed and we competed and i was actually very very good and it was just like for whatever reason i found wrestling and fell out of the horse world so i still have my horses but it's more therapeutic for me it's more like that's like my church whereas that was going to be what i honestly thought was my profession wow. so that's kind of crazy it's yeah, kind of, it's yeah. funny that some of these professions that we want to do, it's almost like we put them on a back burner, but I think it's kind of special in a way because they always do say that when you um, like say you wanted to do horse training or in my case, like certain fashion things, it does become a job. So if, it's, if it remains a passion on the back burner, sometimes that's better. Right. Because yeah. you'll always love it and you always have it, right? Like in your, in your place of like, when I think about that, like had horses become a, a career of mine, it might've taken my love Right. And like that, yeah. that I find like when I'm, I can honestly go horseback riding and I can just be out there riding for an hour, two hours and I'll lose track of time because I don't have my phone. I don't have anything. It's just me and the horse and nature. And that's, wow. that is pretty amazing. So, but just so you know, um, Lisa and Mickey, uh, you know how we always say that you have to expect the unexpected when it comes to God TV and you never know who's going to drop by. Absolutely. Say that. Yeah, we have. A, can we? Can, can we pick up the phone really quick? Hello. Hello. Hello? Is that how we? Do, we still do it that way. Yep. Yep. It's a flip. Hang on. Sorry. Mine's a flip phone. <laughs> oh, my finger. <laughs> we have a we have a call coming in. Oh. Should I answer it? 
Yeah, I answer guess. it. Answer it. Answer it. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Killing me. Yeah. Hello, McFly. Gladys. <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think that's God MVP. Damn. We gotta do not. He, turn the phone yeah, to the landscaping it. side. There she is. There she is. What's up? There she is. <laughs> What's up, babe? This is the word to go, yo, go, yo. Well, as always, everyone, we hate this part of the show. Literally, we'll be in the chat saying, "Is the show over?" We hate that. We do Every thank time. you so much for joining us. Yes, it always seems to fly by because time flies when you're having fun. Lisa, Mickey, don't we hate this part? This is we the do. worst part of the show. It's the worst I'm part. so sad. Let's get rid it's of it. It's sad. Hard <laughs> to say goodbye. Don't leave us. We love it's everybody. Thank you so much for being here in the chat room. <laughs> Speaking of which, we're going to find a karaoke app for our patrons, by the way. Yes. We're talking about this separately. Um, I think I have a solution to this. So if you guys want to sing with us, join that patreon.com slash gaw TV. We're not kidding around. We want no, to do I'm karaoke serious. with you guys. Yes. Lisa, I'm no Kato Kalen, but I, I will sing karaoke with you. <laughs> <laughs> she only wants to sing Red Woman every day, all day. Oh, that, that's the thing. Like Mickey and I, that was our song, Redneck Woman. Redneck mm -hmm. Woman. And we will do that. Patreon. We're going to yeah. do it on Patreon. We'll do it. I would ask you to sing yeah. it now, but we don't want to give away the farm. So we'll no. wait to see it on Patreon. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here. On behalf of Mickey James, Lisa Marie Barron, and I, thank you so much for joining us on God TV. We'll see you in just one short week. We love you. Thanks for tuning Woo! in. Wow. Cheers. Oh, I drank it all. Almost. Cheers. <laughs> this is the word to go, yo, yo, yo.